I've got some really cool cameras to go over today. We're gonna start off with five recent garage sale finds. And then we're gonna go into this box of untested digital cameras. And in this box, we've got some really cool stuff. We're gonna get this video started with an absolute gem. And boy, is there a story behind this. It's kind of a funny story on this one. Uh, I was at a sale which by my reckoning was really pretty poor. It was almost exclusively kids' toys and clothes. Uh, but before I left, I asked if they had literally any film or digital cameras that they might be interested in selling. The owner of the house said, I think we got one that my dad gave me a few years ago, but I never used because I was using my cell phone for pictures. And then she held up the latest version of the iPhone. Then she got up and said, hang on, let me check. Uh, so I twiddled my thumbs and I got sidetracked with a sweet little Sesame Street mini pinball game that I found while waiting. Normally what they would always come back with is like a throwaway instant film camera or a brownie or a Kodak. Uh, something from the 70s or 80s or 90s that has pretty nominal value. And she came back with this camera, which is a Canon EOS 80D pretty premium DSLR camera released seven or eight years ago. And I was pretty flabbergasted and she said she'd actually never used it because it didn't come with a battery when her dad gave it to her. And I didn't have just a LPE6 battery laying around so I wasn't able to test it at the time. And I asked her how much she was interested in selling it for. And she looks at the camera and then looks at me and says, I don't know, hundred bucks? And I was like, uh, I can do 200. Because even worst case situation, if this camera's not working and it's in for parts condition, it should be worth about that. So after that nifty bit of reverse negotiation where I paid higher than she was asking, I uh, walked away with this camera for 200 bucks as well as that sweet little pinball game. So like I said before, this is a Canon EOS 80D. And when it was released, I think in 2016 or 17, it had an MSRP of around a thousand bucks for the body. And on it is a Canon 50 millimeter STM lens, which is kind of a budget, but pretty fast portrait lens. The 80D replaced the 70D, which was super popular, and I've sold dozens of the 70D over the years. Um, that's my full-time job, actually, is buying and selling used digital cameras. Uh, and as such, I've sold a lot, of, uh, a lot of Canon DSLR cameras over the years. The improvements that this made over the 70D were way better video, a better image processor, more autofocus points, taking it to 45, uh, better color depth, and quite a bit more. It's a really capable camera, even in 2024. Uh, I actually bought this last week, and since I got back, I was able to test it with a battery, and I took some pictures, which I'll flash up on the screen uh, over the last week. Really fun to shoot with this camera. I've got a bunch of EF and EFS lenses that'll work with this body, so I might actually have to take this camera out on a loan against myself, because uh, I might shoot with it for the next couple weeks. Wasn't used for quite a long period of time. Um, but fortunately, everything uh, was working and I'll, I'll power it on real quick and you can get an idea of what the menu looks like. And I'll take a few sample pictures here. So cosmetically and physically, it's in pretty good shape, um, apart from needing a little bit of a cleaning. Uh, the thing that I noticed whenever I was just looking at it at the garage sale is there is a lot of dust visible through that viewfinder and it's on the focus screen. But autofocus on this is super quick um, and takes excellent photos. People have even shot like feature length movies with the Canon EOS 80D. So for my $200 investment, uh, the value of just the body uh, on a website like eBay in the United States is going to be around $400. And I'll try to find the shutter count on this camera a little bit later, which can help uh, figure out a little bit more of that value and just add some more context for a prospective buyer in terms of the overall use of the camera that they're buying. And the lens is worth about 75 bucks. It's in good shape, has some light wear and a little bit of dust internally, which is common. So the kit here, you're looking at about 475. Uh, so great return on investment on the $200 that I spent. If both of these were broken when I had purchased it, it would have a value a little bit more than what I paid. This is honestly the best garage sale find camera that I think that I've had, uh, because very rarely do you see more premium models like this. Uh, at garage sales. Normally it's point and shoot digital cameras and old film cameras like we were talking about before. So this was a sweet pickup. During the spring garage sale season in the Southwest, uh, that's when I found the best opportunity to get good camera deals and other electronics deals. Uh, I picked up a, a vintage Leupold scope uh, from I think the 60s or 70s for 10 bucks that's worth about 300. Um, and that was a really, really good pickup too. 
So I really have a good time doing garage sales when they're available. Uh, as we head into summer and it gets super hot, over 100 degrees Fahrenheit here in Arizona, 110. Uh, that's when those really slow to a crawl. So I kind of do it when I'm when I can. We've got a Fujifilm HS20. Uh, picked this up at the garage sale as well, a different one, and fortunately was able to test it there because this camera uses AA batteries. Uh, but the battery tray when I was looking at it was clean, uh, so I thought that was a good sign, and I was able to power it on and take a few pictures uh, at the garage sale. And this is kind of a neat camera. It's a bridge camera that Fujifilm made uh, that's got a 30x zoom that's a 720 millimeter film equivalent. And uh, it really has pretty good range. Now there's some limitations with that range, uh, especially if you're in lighting conditions that are a little bit dicey as you head into dawn or dusk, uh, as well as if you're using the full area of that focal range, then that picture quality can get a little bit dicey from my experience. Um, but this camera is in pretty good shape. That's one of the reasons why I went ahead and picked it up. Um, it doesn't have any major issues. The lens glass is good. And when I was testing it, the flash fired and autofocus is working well. Uh, I was able to go ahead and take this out and uh, get a few pictures taken with it um, in the desert here in Arizona. And it's got a, a, view, a digital viewfinder uh, as well as the LCD that you're able to utilize to take pictures. Just kind of handy and it'll flip back and forth if it senses the eye there. This was considered a premium bridge model from Fujifilm when this was released. And I really like the kind of, it's not a true manual focus lens. Um, I think it's focused by wire, but it kind of gives you that DSLR feel from rotating the barrel. So I spent 25 bucks on this camera. I was happy to pay that because in good working condition, uh, this has a value in the United States of about a hundred bucks. So what you'll see, what I've noticed at least from garage sales in my area is oftentimes you're able to find really, really good deals on cameras. They're just really few and far between. So for example, to get these five cameras, I had to go to 14 different garage sales over a period of time. And uh, it's a lot of driving and it's a lot of time spent trying to find deals. Uh, talking about garage sales, do you guys ever source or buy from garage sales? It doesn't have to be cameras. Was it electronics, collectibles, art, uh, furniture? Uh, I followed a number of other YouTube channels that actually flip furniture uh, and buy and sell and acquire a lot of their products through garage sales, which I find pretty interesting. But let me know in the comments down below. Uh, wherever you're at, whatever country you're in, maybe it's called a different name, but are there community sales or times where you're able to purchase directly from people that are looking to get rid of their excess junk? Really enjoy the thrill of the hunt. Camera number three that I got is a Kodak PixPro AZ528. And this camera was just sitting there pretty lonely uh, on a shelf with a bunch of uh, diet supplements on it and uh, had a price tag of 50 um, and I was able to talk them down to 20 uh, largely because the battery even though it was included was dead so I had to charge it when I got back so I didn't know if this camera was working and fortunately it is once I was able to test it it does power on the lens glass is good and this is a camera that has a really good 52x optical zoom so for a budget price point super zoom camera uh, it's really not a bad deal. This was sold widely online, and I believe Walmart carried it as they carried a lot of the PixPro line. Um, it's kind of a no frills, budget oriented super zoom camera. Uh, as you get into that further out optical range, autofocus becomes pretty dicey and it's a little bit hard to lock in on your subject, especially if it's moving. But if you have a tripod and the lighting conditions are good, you can actually take some pretty interesting pictures with this camera. Uh, here's what the optical zoom range looks like. It's not competing with more premium bridge cameras or DSLR cameras. That's certainly not it. But for 20 bucks, this camera takes some pretty dang good pictures. I'll pop some up on the screen so you get an idea of what this camera can do. It does get a little bit soft outside of that focal area, I've noticed. It can take a little while, like I said, for the autofocus to lock in and to actually get a crisp picture. Um, but this is a fun camera to shoot with. It does have a little bit of tape down here where the price was. So I'll get this cleaned up a little bit. And the value of this camera is gonna be about a hundred bucks on a website like eBay. Uh, if you pair it with a charger and a memory card. 
So that's another good return on investment. Camera number four. Now this is really cool. This is a throwback for all you early digital camera adopters. We've got a Kodak DC 210. Very early, I believe either one or slightly less than one megapixel camera. And this camera was released in 1998, as far as I'm aware. Very, very early camera and uses compact flash from memory and double A batteries. The reason that I bought this untested, and it was untested when I bought it because it didn't have any batteries and I didn't have any with me to test, but uh, the battery tray looked good. That was the reason why I bought it. Uh, and this isn't a value, we'll get to value in a little bit, but this isn't a camera that I bought for the value. I bought it more for the nostalgia um, and just to see what this camera could do. Uh, when I got it home, it did power on and I noticed that I actually had a memory card in there. There's the uh, sweet old school menu. And to move from video capture to play, you just move this pretty big wheel here. There's the lens engaging. The little tiny little lens moves out. Very, very noisy. Has a 2x zoom. And takes forever to take a picture when you press the shutter button. It just takes a long time for the memory card to interface and record to. Uh, it's, it's a slow process to take pictures on this camera. Uh, I did notice when I was taking pictures with it, it had a 1997 date stamped on the pictures taken. I'll throw some pictures up on the screen. Uh, I noticed even in camera and looking at the native resolution, the picture quality was pretty dicey. So on this big screen, I would think that the picture quality is going to be not so great. This is a really early digital camera and the fact that it's working 25 years later is really, really sweet. So my $2 isn't gonna take me to the moon, unfortunately. We're looking at about a $25 value on this camera working. And here's that memory card I was telling you about. It's a compact flash, a whole eight megabytes. And that'll hold about 16 or 18 photos on this camera. Okay, the last pickup I had actually isn't a camera, but uh, it is a camcorder. And it's a Panasonic PV GS36. Panasonic made a bunch of these. Um, there's actually three major manufacturers that made these and if you're not familiar this is what the tape looks like it uses a tape to record to there's a couple different types of tapes there was mini dv there was uh, super 8 tapes um, and then there's full-size vhs tapes on some camcorders okay so let's go ahead and put a battery in and uh, see if this is working i haven't actually tested this yet uh, i spent five bucks at a garage sale on this they said they didn't know if it worked uh, so I just went ahead and gambled. Let's move it to power. It does power on. That's half the battle. Uh, the biggest issues that you see with these camcorders, and we've seen a few in videos I've done in the past, is actually tray problems with the mini DV tape. And we'll go ahead and pop it open here. Sometimes they're on the bottom, sometimes they're on the side. There we go. And I can throw in my mini DV tape here. And that's a tape that I know is working. So whenever I'm testing items like this, I wanna make sure I'm testing them with products that I know have worked in other working units. So whenever I test tape-based camcorders, uh, I always test them with the tape just to make sure they're recording and playing back properly. Uh, this one powers on, uh, it accepts the tape. I'm gonna go ahead and record. And sometimes if you see the checkered lines or checkered bars when you're playing back the video, uh, a lot of the times the head of the unit may need a cleaning and Sony and a few other brands actually sell mini DV tape cleaning kits uh, if that is the case. And I've used those to pretty good success in the past. Uh, use the little joystick to maneuver, rewind, stop very very fast and then we'll hit play okay so we've got uh, video and audio playing back properly 
So everything looks good on recording and playback of this unit. So with the charger and uh, potentially a new mini DV tape, and without any of the AV cables, you'd be looking at a value of about $60 on this unit. So five into 60 is a good return, but like 50% or more of the time that actually won't work. And then that your $5 is just uh, something you gotta write off on your taxes. So there is definitely some risk, but uh, the payoff I think is worth it when you do it enough times. There is also some wear on the grip and that'll affect the value a little bit too. So if this was in super condition with AV cables, it'd be more of a value but like 75. Okay, let's go ahead and open this box here. And this is a box of untested digital cameras, uh, DSLR cameras that I paid $500 for, which is definitely paying up for what's included in here. Um, but this is a supplier I've gotten a number of different lots from over the last six years. And they've been pretty honest and reliable. And they said that they thought most of them should be working. So rather than my normal 50, 60% success rate, the price that I paid for these is more contingent with most of them actually working. So hopefully that is the case. If you haven't yet and you find these videos interesting, please leave a like and uh, subscribe. It uh, really helps YouTube to let me know that the content is worthwhile for the audience and really appreciate it. Thank you. There's some great stuff in this box. Some great, kind of unusual stuff. Not super well packed. So my goal on this box, I spent 500 bucks, like I said, is to get to a value about 850. Most of the items in here are pretty desirable and they should sell pretty quickly on a website like eBay. So that's one of the reasons why I went ahead and uh, paid as much as I did. All right, first up, we've got a Sony DSC HX50. So this is a really cool uh, super zoom compact body. Uh, that was competing with a lot of the Panasonic Lumixes uh, in the same vein with 25, 30, 40 X and like the Canon SX 600, 700, 720, uh, kind of in that vein. 20 megapixel, uses the NPBX1 battery. There's not one in here. There is a little memory card. See, I think I've got a BX1. I've got a bunch of batteries, like I always say over here off to the side and even more in the back. Uh, a very commonly used batteries from major manufacturers that I try to keep charged. Does power on. Lens glass looks good, just needs a little bit of a cleaning. And I'll use my cleaning cloth on that. And I'll have some links down below uh, the YouTube video as well for some of the products that I've been using for a number of years now uh, to clean as well as to power cameras. So that looks pretty good. Here's what the LCD looks like. And let's uh, do a little bit of zoom testing. We're gonna zoom all the way out, make sure we don't see any artifacts that would show up in the pictures taken. And then I will test the flash as well. And the flash is engaged by this tiny little button right here. Choo! And let's uh, go ahead and try it. Sometimes you get into weird settings. Okay, I'll flip it to intelligent auto. And then uh, the flash should, there we go. I was in some sort of manual setting. Flash does fire and autofocus is working well and the picture just took and looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this outside and we'll get some pictures taken with this and uh, see what they look like. There are a lot of cactus flowers blooming right now in Southern Arizona. We've had about double our annual rainfall so far. So normally by this period in the year, we've had about three and a half inches and we've had a little north of seven inches. So. There's a lot of wildflowers blooming. There's a lot of weeds, unfortunately, and uh, there's a lot of cactus blooming. So this camera's working, takes good pictures. The lens glass has a few very light scratches. Um, if this was in mint condition, super, super clean condition, hardly used, value north of 200 bucks. In its current condition, uh, with a charger and a memory card, you'd be looking at a value of about 175 on the DSC HX50. So that's a good pickup. All right, next up, this is kind of the outlier in the box. Didn't really fit in with everything uh, that had a little bit higher value. It's more of a vintage Nikon Coolpix 4800 four megapixel camera with an 8X optical zoom, maybe 4X. They, they used to combine optical and digital into their zooms before it became the standardized optical zoom. So I'll have to double check on that one. 
But this uses the Nikon ENL1 battery or uh, it uses a 2CR5, which is both rechargeable and non-rechargeable. So that might be the better way to go. I have a non-rechargeable one here, so we can just test it. Very common battery that's used in older film cameras as well. But makes it super easy to test cameras that use that uh, ENL1 battery. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Looks to be in really nice physical shape. So we've got the menu there. We're in London. And the year is 2004. London in 2004, interesting time. Power's on, looks good. Uh, I'm hopeful that this will be working. Let's move the lens in and out. A little bit noisy, that's common for this model. Sold a number of these. Let's try taking a picture. Flash is firing and it looks good. So Nikon Coolpix 4800, uh, value on this camera, not great. With just the battery there, you'd be looking at a value of about 35 bucks on this camera. But still, two for two working so far. It's a good start. We have six cameras left in here. And this is a cool camera, Sony A33 with a Sony DT 35 millimeter uh, portrait lens. And on an APS-C size sensor like the Sony A33, you'd be looking at a equivalent focal range of around just shy of 50 millimeters. So this is a really, really good walk around lens. Fun to shoot with, pretty fast. Um, and this uses the Sony NPFW50 battery. There's not one in there, and there is a memory card, and the tripod mount has a little bit of wear. And that's, I see that commonly with Sony, their plastic uh, molds, I think that they used were a little bit uh, softer. So a lot of the times with heavy tripod use, that tripod uh, wear can get uh, kind of imprinted on the bottom of the camera. Got a replacement battery here. I heard it, it's always a good sign. Lens engaged, power's on, and let's go there. Uh, where are we at now? New York, Bogota. Okay. Power's on, that looks good. We've got live view on this, as well as a viewfinder. Uh, set to auto, let's go ahead and try taking a few pictures. There is an AF-MF toggle here for autofocus, manual focus. It's set to auto. And it engages the viewfinder when you get dry next to it. Autofocus looks good. Uh, to pop the flash, there's a flash button here. Flash fires. And autofocus is looking good. Let's go ahead and take off the lens and look at the lens glass. Glass could use a little bit of cleaning, that's for sure. Cool. So this DSLR camera was released, I think, in 2011, 2012 timeframe. Um, pretty popular. Uh, a lot of the times the screen has wear from the screen protector that they use. This one actually doesn't, and that's good. It is missing the rubber viewfinder cap. So the value of the Sony A33 with this 35 millimeter lens, uh, you'd be looking at value of about 160 bucks on this kit. So I'm happy that it works. It's in good shape and looks to have had pretty moderate use over the years. Maybe the crown jewel of the lot in terms of uh, potential value. We've got a Canon PowerShot ELF 180 RED. And this is a super slim, compact, 20 megapixel digital camera with a decent 8x optical zoom that Canon released six or seven years ago. Uh, and the value of this has gone up quite a bit. I've been selling digital cameras used now for over 15 years and I've been doing it full time for seven. And this camera, even a few years ago, would sell for around 100 to 125. And uh, in good working shape, the value has gone up even more since then. It's got a battery in it. NV11L battery. Let's go ahead and power it on and see if it works. Got a little bug there. Got a gnat. There's some gnats that fly around in here because I have a lot of lights on all the time. Um, they tend to like that quite a bit. So let's see if that camera works. Oh, yeah, power's on. Glass looks good, I'll just get that cleaned off a little bit. And uh, physically, cosmetically, this looks really nice. No optical viewfinder in here, so you're just using that screen. Which can make it a little bit challenging when it's you're outdoors on a bright sunny day. There's no memory card in here, so that was just the noise that you're hearing there. And the camera is working well. Don't see any issues with it at all. 
And I would say this is in good, close to very good condition once I get it cleaned up. And the value of this is going to be about 175 bucks on the Canon PowerShot L180. Uh, with a box in minty condition, you'd be looking at a value north of 200 on this. Okay, next up, we've got a Nikon Coolpix S6300 in red. This is a camera that's also gotten more popular over the last few years. And it uses the Nikon ENL12 battery. And I've got a couple replacements over here. Very common, uh, very common battery that Nikon used for a bunch of different camera models. Power's on. Hmm. Lens glass has some scratches visible. And a little bit of dust internally. The dust is pretty common and normally doesn't affect picture quality at all. Uh, the light lens glass scratches. We'll take a few test pictures and kind of see what that looks like. And may have to move them over to the computer just to double check. Everything's looking good. Um, but part of that will depend upon light refractions too when you're outside taking pictures. But it really doesn't look too bad. So I don't think it'll pose any issues should the camera be working. The lens moves in and out fine and the LCD looks decent. Okay, flash is firing, focus looks good. Uh, I'm not seeing any real issues with the camera. It is a bummer about the lens glass scratches because that will affect the value. Uh, in good working condition, uh, this would have a value 100 to $125. With the light lens glass scratches, assuming that the pictures turned out okay, uh, we'd be looking at a value of about $75 on this camera. Okay, three cameras left. Ooh, yeah, I saw this one. Uh, Nikon Coolpix S620 in kind of this pink blossom color, I think is what Nikon called it at the time. Uh, it's a very light pink, so it may be hard to come through on video, uh, but pretty unusual color and kind of an unusual model as well, the Nikon S620. You see the S630 quite a bit more often. Uh, this uses the same battery, the Nikon ENL12. Green button powers on and we've got the menu. Let's go ahead and hit no. Cool. How's the lens glass look? Ooh, glass looks great. Just get it cleaned up a little bit. Lens moves in and out fine. Wow, this is a beauty for sure. Pretty unusual model color combination. Autofocus is working and the flash is firing. So this is a good, uh, good pickup. I've seen the S620 in pink from Japanese sellers in the $175 to $200 range, sometimes with boxes. Uh, I would give a value of this in its current almost very good working condition range of about $125 once I pair it with a charger and a memory card. Okay, second to last camera, we've got a Canon PowerShot SX200 in this plum purple color. Um, definitely got some wear. Wear on the bottom and the LCD has some wear and a ding off to the side on the body. This uses the NB5L battery. Got does power on. The flash pops up automatically when the camera's powered on, that's normal. But we've got some major issues here. Uh, it's got a couple of scratches and there's a lot of dust internally on the lens, like quite a bit, pretty heavy. So let's go ahead and uh, put it through its paces and see what that looks like. When you turn it on, you've got uh, a lot of uh, spots and looks like fuzz visible uh, in the pictures taken. So these will actually show up in the pictures taken. Um, and there is dust inside of the glass or possibly uh, inside of the sensor that is going to be causing that. Um, there's a few different techniques you can try, but with that much dust in the sensor, that's gonna be pretty challenging from my experience. Um, there are a number of tricks that you can try uh, that are vacuum and uh, vibration based. Um, but uh, that's kind of a bummer. Let's uh, see if this takes pictures anyway. If it does, there may be a little bit of value yet. Flash fires, does take a picture and autofocus is working, but there are artifacts in all those pictures taken. So in good working shape, this would have a value in the 75 to $100 range. Tested and working and taking pictures, but with those black spots, potentially sensor dust related issues, you'd be looking at a value of about 20 bucks on this camera. That's the first kind of uh, only partially working camera we've got there. And we've got one camera left to hopefully hit that target of 850. 
And I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna quite get there. We've got a Panasonic DMC TZ4 Lumix. Uh, an early kind of what they call long zoom uh, optical range camera with a 10X optical. Uh, this was a predecessor to the ZS line and uh, a lot of the more advanced super zoom cameras that came down the road. Looks to be in pretty decent shape. I see this and a bunch of the other TZ series cameras quite a bit. It does have a memory card in there. That's cool. And uh, let's see if I can find a battery. It uses the CGA S007 battery. Biggest issue I see with this is uh, dust in sensor related issues actually. I'm set to play. Ooh, glass looks good. Good start. Lens moves in and out fine. No, not seeing any artifacts or uh, issues there. That all looks great. Let's try taking a couple pictures. Ooh, looks great. My success rate on, on this particular model is around 50-50. Maybe even worse than that. So to have a working one is great to see. Um, and the little faux rubber grip on the front actually looks to be in good shape too. A lot of the times that's delaminated or sticky. It looks good. So this camera is in good working shape. You pair this with the memory card that's in there and the charger, and you'd be looking at a value of about 45 bucks on this model. So with that, we hit a uh, show just around 815. Didn't quite hit that $850 target, and it's gonna leave not a ton of margin to work with on that uh, untested lot buy. But, but boy, some of those garage sale finds were really fun. Uh, some very, very uncommon stuff that, I've, that I got there. I'll have a few other videos as well up on the screen for you to choose from if you wanted to watch any more unboxing type videos where I go over other cameras that I've purchased. But uh, as always, get out there, have some fun, make some memories.